Okay guys, so this one might ruffle a few feathers. Uh, and to all of those who are basically saying that we are only here to sell things, Go figure, let's, let's take a look at this. Basically, we're gonna be looking at everything that is wrong with the standard scuba diving setup. Uh, just like many things in life, when you first start out, there are guides on all the gear that you need to go scuba diving. But again, just as most things in life, if you invest in all of that gear, you then need to spend the next bunch of dives streamlining things and cutting down what you've just invested in because yeah, why would you know that cheap steel knives rust after just one dive if you don't clean them properly or, or any other sort of bits and bobs? There are some things that you really just don't need and some things that are just plain wrong with the basic scuba diving setup. So let's take a closer look at why the standard scuba diving setup is just wrong. Hoses on a standard regulator setup are a mixture of too short and too long, both at the same time. They'll do the job, sure, but they're super generic and not really the best when something proverbially hits the rotating blades. So let's start with the Octo. Straight out of the box, your Octo will invariably be screwed onto a 90 centimeter hose or something very similar. This gives it a nice amount of length to loop underneath your arm and kind of clip somewhere here on your BCD, but what's the primary function of your Octo? It's to help your buddy out in a jam. 90 centimeters from the back of your head to your buddy's mouth makes things really intimate when they've just run out of air. And they're not gonna be as nice and mellow and methodical as in your pool sessions. My alternate is on a two meter long hose. So when we do have plenty of slack to get them out of a jam and for them to calm down far away from me if they need to. So many divers also donate their Octo. I know that's kind of the whole point of it, you donate your Octo, but just imagine the muck that can creep into that mouthpiece inside your Octo when it just sits on your hip for every dive. Most divers will probably do a cursory tap of the Octo's purge button and figure, yeah, it's working, that'll be good enough for the dive. But now you're 30 meters down and your buddy inhales a mouthful of silt or water because one of the diaphragms is ripped bad things are gonna happen. A better way would be for you to take a nice big breath from your primary and then donate that to your buddy because you know it's working and you yourself can swap to your alternate. If that malfunctions on you, you can then take your primary back and you can both share it. It has been a very long time since I've dived a jacket style BCD and I can't say that I've missed them particularly. For all the extra bulk, weight and features, uh, all you really get is the diving equivalent of a safety blanket just kind of wrapping you up so you feel a bit more secure. The storage pockets in my opinion are just a waste of space because you can't really get into them anyway and they have way too many D-rings. Any more than about four is just a waste of time to be honest. Uh, you don't need a separate D-ring for every single accessory, and even if you did, some BCDs are sporting upwards of eight D-rings located all over them. Now, I can't think of a single dive where I've ever had eight accessories all hanging off of me. That is literally the definition of a Christmas tree diver, and of course, a flappy snag hazard. If you do look at 95% of professional level divers around the world who actually spend some time investing in their gear, then you'll notice that they lean pretty heavily towards wing style BCDs. When you research them, you'll hear the terror of being pushed forwards on the surface, but there is a simple fix, just deflate a little and, you know, lean back a bit. Um, some also say that they're hard to deflate, but this is usually down to user error and they just need to learn how to purge gas properly. They kind of expect that all BCDs are gonna act the same as one another. You just have to change the way you dive a little bit so the gas can escape. Um, just like the way that you drive a small car versus a big car, you just have to change the way you dive a little bit and it'll work fine. You're throwing some shade on that. <laughs> We really are at the peak of fin technology today, and fin designers seem to be maintaining their jobs by just inventing buzzwords for new materials like technopolymer, which just means 
plastic, uh, and Purimax, all these kind of things, which basically means it's a different type of plastic. Now, yes, these features and designs are making fins more efficient and fancy, but if a pair of fins designed in the 60s is still one of the most popular designs around today, then maybe we've gone too far. Some fin designs even limit you to which kickstyles you can actually use in the water, and that's not a great feature in my books. There are some new features that I can get on board with, like spring heel straps, but if a pair of fins has too many bells and whistles and moving parts, then it's just something else that can go wrong. And why would you need a whistle on a pair of fins? Uh, and of course, these features, they can always get ruined when a playful seal decides to chomp on them, and that's just a hundred pound mistake just waiting to happen. You, no, what your fin <laughs> needs is Bluetooth. Bluetooth, yes, yeah, so they can communicate. They yeah. can communicate with your dive computer <laughs> about how many steps you've done. <laughs> then connect to your Fitbit. Yeah, how many calories. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Now I use two types of clips for my gear, bolt snaps and double-ended bolt snaps. All of these fiddly clips and loops and retractors are just something else that you can't quite secure properly underwater, and because it's made of plastic, it's invariably just gonna break eventually. If you're not going to be using something during a dive, then first of all, why did you bring it with you? And you should be able to clip it off and secure it somewhere so it doesn't dangle and become another flappy snag hazard. Magnetic clips are a genius idea on paper. But when one of our main methods of navigating underwater is a compass, then a powerful magnet sat on your hip will just have you swimming around and around in circles. Retractors work fine for the first few times, uh, but then after a while the mechanism just tends to wear or they jam or something, and it really isn't that much more effort just to clip something off or use a wrist lanyard or something if you're worried about dropping it. Snorkels do have their place on a dive. It's on the surface or in a pocket. You can usually pick out a green diver pretty easily when their snorkel is still attached to their mask on a dive, flapping away and doing its usual snorkel thing with an MOD of about 20 centimeters. So snorkels are a tool and just like any tool, they're great at what they do, but you don't have to carry one with you for every single job. In all honesty, it's been a very long time since I've actually taken a snorkel on a dive with me. I always bring one with me in case I want to go for a snorkel, but it usually stays in my kit bag back on the surface. I don't get the point of snorkels. So snorkels, the main point is so that you don't waste any gas swimming out looking for the, um, the dive site. So you can be face down, you're looking down. And then as you go under the water, you switch from your snorkel to your regulator. Um, but... Just, just be more efficient using your... Uh, yeah, yeah, and also they say you you should always have something in your mouth when yeah. you're when you're on the surface, um, because when you're trying to get back onto a boat, a splash of water or something can happen. Yeah. Uh, but a regulator is more useful than an octo, uh, so it's just yeah. The only other decent reason for a snorkel is in water rescue breaths because trying to do um, like in water rescue breaths, the sort of the dosi do method or whatever, you get tired really quickly. Whereas with a snorkel, you can fit the snorkel into their mouth, secure that airway, and then you can just blow into the tube. Um, so you don't have to get out of the water to get above them and breathe or roll their entire body up to you. Um, you can just like, it's quite easy because you can hold onto their jaw. So you're holding their airway open, you're securing so water can't get in it. It's all, you can also tow, so you can be swimming whilst pulling them along. And then you can blow into it. So there were the main things that really popped into my head, uh, but I'm sure you guys have a few pet peeves about the standard scuba diving setup. Um, if it was standard, then surely all scuba divers would be kitted up in pretty similar gear, uh, but there is a very wide range of stuff on the market and, um, and how divers use it. So discuss. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, then feel free to like, share, and subscribe it, do all that social media stuff so the community can get involved. Thank you for watching and safe diving.
We are an online dive store serving the UK and the world for all your diving equipment needs. So why not visit us at simplyscuba.com or click the box on your screen.